So in the senior year of medical school, I took an elective with uh, uh, Dr. George Thorne. Worked in his laboratory for a while. And he was a very interesting thing. They were setting up the first American trials with the artificial kidney. The artificial kidney had been uh, created in its current version in Holland during World War II by someone named Dr. Kolff, K-O-L-F-F. Um, Dr. Thorne had heard about this, <coughs> and he had one <coughs> constructed uh, in Massachusetts and delivered to the Brigham Hospital. And someone named Dr. George, I mean, uh, uh, John Merrill and I were assigned to make the darn thing work. Well, <coughs> we had to start from scratch. The artificial kidney at that time was a large revolving drum around which something like sausage casing was wrapped and had a big tank of about 100 liters <coughs> that you had to, to dialyze against. Well, there were no dialysis uh, solutions. So we had to start with a yellow pad and figure out now how much uh, potassium, how much sodium, how much uh, we would weigh it out and dump it in, and pour water in, and mix it with a stick. That was how dialysis fluid. And, <clears throat> but the most amusing thing, we didn't have pumps to get the blood back to the uh, patient. So you take blood out of an artery, the pressure of the artery, it would uh, be carried up to a reservoir, and then flow by gravity back into a vein. This was acute dialysis. You didn't have a pump, had to make a pump out of an old refrigerator pump. And um, we didn't have non-wettable substances to suck the blood into and send it back. Now, people don't believe this, but it's true. We hit upon using condoms. And I, as the youngest member of the team, was sent weekly down to Joe Sparrow's drugstore to buy the condoms. A gross of condoms a at a time. A gross of condoms. And they'd say, here he comes again. I was never held in such high repute as during those uh, few months. <laughs>